work that was done by Dr. Conley. She's replicated this work. We now have thousands of cases where we have sent um, blood to her to have it evaluated. It's a very eloquent study. She takes cadaver brain sections. She takes the blood from kids with autism, puts it on that section of the brain, incubates it, uh, washes it, and then stains it for antibody complex. It means, did any of his immune system antibodies stick to the brain section? About two-thirds of our cases, it does. Now, does that mean it's directly causing it? No, but it's reacting somehow, or something's going on that is highly suspicious that the blood-brain barrier is under immunological direct attack, or that's something there that's causing alterations of that. That's a huge target for intervention. When we see that, we consider a combination of anti-inflammatories and hyperbarics for these kids, and you know what? It's amazing. Oftentimes, they start talking very shortly after we do that combination. Now, I'm going to hop out a little bit because I only have about eight minutes left. And I'm going to bypass a lot of really important stuff. The good news for you, and that's true, it's really important stuff, but I don't have 10 hours. I have about eight minutes, and I want to get to an actual case and show you a little bit of how I process this. Now, um, the really good news for you is that it's all in the paper. So if you ask me for the paper, you'll get it. You can read through this whole process. So we got to the point of saying, okay, we, it's really hard for us to prove with research studies, because one, we don't have the money for the research studies, and it's very hard to design research studies to emulate what we actually do with our kids, because we vary too many things at once, deliberately, uh, to try and create balance in this homogeneity of, of our kids where we really balance things out for them. But what um, we wanted to do was, to, like diabetes and hypertension, the docs who treat that stuff, they got it easy, okay? They put a blood pressure cuff on, they measure it, they give you more drugs if you need more drugs. They check your blood sugar, they give you more insulin if you need more insulin. That, come on, that's easy. Really, I'm, you know, sometimes complicated. But, you know, for most of us as doctors, that's the bread and butter, easy stuff. We can do that right in medical school. We need some biomarkers. We need something that says objectively what's wrong with our kid and why am I doing what am I doing? Why am I giving you antibiotics? Why am I giving you antifungals? Why am I giving you anti-inflammatories? Why am I suggesting you take antioxidants? because a paper came out last week that said that, or because the lady next door had a kid with autism and she did and it worked. Sometimes that's reasonable rationale, but not for me as a doctor. I need more than that. So biomarkers. Isoprostane, this I get from a, the laboratory Philippe Augusta in Paris, and we've put together a, an article. Uh, our research was published in the proceedings of IMFAR, and we found dramatic differences between this and our no normal population, and so did Dr. Ming at the University of New Jersey. This says that the membranes, of which the brain is a critical constituent of just a bunch of membranes, are oxidized. They're biologically rusty, and a lot rusty. Should be in the under 200 range. Actually, it says 160 there, but trust me, it's under 200. And it's 618, three times more biological rust than there should be there. That means that the body is throwing away lots of cell membrane stuff. Cysteine, which defends the body against oxidative stress, is deficient, radically deficient in this kid. Oxidation of RNA, the basic factory that makes everything in the body, is a rusty factory. 123 units compared to 20 to 40 units. Big deal. Now, you've seen the point. We need antioxidants. We need things to, to deal with this. This is an inflammatory marker. Neopterin is what happens when the immune cells turn on. It should be under about 200 or so. This one's 1,147. The immune system is raging. This is a very hot immune system. Calprotectin, which winds up in poop, this stuff is in a marker of inflammatory bowel disease. Unquestionably, this kid's 122. Meets all the criteria for being highly suspicious of inflammatory bowel disease. When we look at markers of intestinal dysbiosis, this is a propionic acid analog. Should be under 150. It's 2,278. It's huge. So are the yeast markers. Some of these yeast markers are very elevated. This is a kid with an abnormal intestinal ecosystem. I now have what I need to treat this person. Is there a single drug that's going to do this? No way. I need antioxidants. I need anti-inflammatories. I need something to get rid of the yeast. I need something to get rid of the bad bacteria. I need all of that. Do I need it sequentially, one at a time? No. By the way, Dr. Feingold, I see you sitting in the back there. I hope you don't take any offense to anything that I said. I love your research. You're brilliant. And I wish I could do the research I need to do the way I need to do it. And you're sitting next to another brilliant research 
uh, researcher from uh, Western Ontario, Dr. McFab. We have a great audience. Um, now, when we do this, uh, this just kind of shows the distribution of abnormal bacteria that aren't present, and the yeast was, um, one of these species was there. Um, let's get down to this. I'm going to go to the very end. Now, development is a trajectory, just like a, a rocket launch, right? Time goes by, the kid gets more skills. You plot that out, you have a trajectory. It's not like, hopefully, this along the baseline, where you come back and they say, oh, he's doing a lot better. Better compared to whom? Better compared to himself, usually. But you have to compare to peers. What is normal trajectory? Is your kid on a normal glide path, normal flight path, just like you're monitoring a rocket launch as a NASA scientist or controller, is your kid on a normal launch or is he off course? Most of our kids are off course. A year goes by and they don't get a year's worth of progress. That's the sad news. That is objective evidence that we have to have to know that we're, whatever it is we're doing is sufficient to move the kid forward faster. When I, when I take that typical kid with that picture, and they're young, like two or three years old, and we get that all cleaned up for them, their trajectory normalizes. And sometimes with intervention and therapy, it's even better than that, and they quickly join their peer group. It's remarkable. Some of you have heard about that, right? Our next speaker is going to tell you all about that that in fact it's possible to get that trajectory back on track, and it truly is. But you have to have a plan and you have to have a rationale. So I think the science is coming to us, the biomarkers are coming to us, and together we're able to create a plan that puts this entire mess together. And this is a slide that Dr. Um, Nataf at uh, Laboratory Philippe Augustin Paris put together for me. I love this slide. It's all of that together. The environmental insults, the genes, the immunological consequences, oxidative stress, and all of that coming together to create this issue that we call autism. So I am hopeful, and you had better be hopeful and persistent or you're not going to get the job done. And my wife is going to make sure that I'm persistent, I guarantee you. She's not going to let me rest on this subject. So if you don't have this paper, email me, and I will give you this paper. That's your notes for this entire lacture. It's free. DrBrideStreetAL.com and I'll be happy to send this out to you. I hope this has been meaningful and helpful to you, and God bless you all, and I hope your kids recover.